Welcome back, warriors, to another episode of The Worth... You know the deal. Criticom was bad, Expect No Mercy was worse, so I now find myself elbow deep in the garbage juice to plumb the fetid depths even further. And while we've squared off against a number of games that, in one way or another, have tried to ape much bigger fighting franchises, there have been some, um, specific offenders in the annals of fighting gamedom that are far more infamous than the ones I've featured on this show. Allow me to introduce the Masters Fighter, not to be confused with the Genesis Classic Fighting Masters, an arcade and PlayStation 2D button basher that is both simultaneously obscure as all hell and well known amongst the purveyors of the genre's deepest, darkest circles. While it's certainly low quality by all possible metrics, the Master's Fighter, god that's so awkward to say, goes above and beyond most games that I've tackled before in a few key areas. But will that secret sauce be enough to blast Expect No Mercy from atop its lofty throne? Well, we won't find out until we get it in the ring. Okay, so if you assume that something that looks like this doesn't have an interesting history, well, you'd be wrong. Because the story of this one goes a lot deeper than it should. In 1995, a South Korean company by the name of Unico developed a game called Master's Fury, which was distributed in arcades by another mysterious company, uh, Game Tech. No, not that Game Tech, another Game Tech. Upon its release, it was spectacularly ignored by pretty much everyone who saw it, or didn't in this case. Now we all know that companies were pumping out fighting games by the dozens to capitalize on Street Fighter II's success in the early 90s, but this was 1995, so Master's Fury was striking precisely when the iron was cooling off, while 3D fighters were just heating up. So it's no surprise that something that never tried to be anything more than an overt Street Fighter and SNK clone failed to resonate, especially when just the quickest glance to its gameplay would absolutely confirm that. Every single uh, master was uh, quite obviously pieced together from a variety of other sources, with the most flagrant of those sources coming from Art of Fighting, along with a healthy dash of a few others. Upon Unico's failure to generate any significant profits from this arcade release, they decided to try their luck on console. Somehow, they were able to convince Sony Computer Entertainment to allow them to release their rip-off at their homage on the PlayStation. But, but this wasn't Master's Fury, no, this was the Master's Fighter. It's got different character names and portrait art, a new intro, some tweaks to the sprites, completely different select screen and UI, obviously the title, but I I'm not really sure why any of this was done. Maybe Unico thought some companies might get a little suey over some of the stuff in Master's Fury, but that doesn't make any sense either, because some of these edits actually make things even dicier in a legal sense. To make this port possible, Unico teamed up with another company, uh, Cinema Supply, to publish this thing for a November 1997 PlayStation release. J just imagine trying to convince someone with no prior knowledge of this whole debacle that this was a legit official game release on the PlayStation in 97. Ah, oh, massacre! To try and understand the intention here, why don't we just turn to the manufacturer's notes that came with this version of the game. Uh, let's see here, uh, uh, ah uh, yes, okay. Um, was very popular in America and Europe, Master's Fury, but now the PlayStation Master's Fighter released as a remake. Ah, so that confirms it then. This is this is somehow a remake that's way, way worse than the original in every way, but okay, okay what else does it say? Big scale character made? Overseas, worth a look, just gorgeous background. Dasani animation sensation in 3D. Sensation of continuous attack. Also introduces double the exhilar exhilaration of a reversal super mortal Ichida and more. Features, third person perspectives. 2D graphics, cartoon graphics, and fighting theme. 
So I hope that clears things up. Obviously, the Masters Fighter on the PlayStation didn't do much for Unico either, but they did seem to finally achieve some success with the Silk Road series of beat-em-ups, which I can't say I've played, because they look like this. Now, before we move on to the... No, no, yet, not yet. There's one last thing I wanted to mention that should bring everything to focus for any of you out there that are currently asking, well, what's going on? Why is this game like this? If the name Unico sounds familiar at all, it's because it was attached to another legendary fighting game. That being Dragon Master. Yes, this milestone of early YouTube content creation was also developed by them, and it also traced over the sprites and animation patterns from other, much more notable franchises. Ah, never change, Unico. D oh wait, you can't because you went out of business decades ago. To complement its terrible gameplay, Master's Fighter doesn't disappoint with its equally terrible visuals, which, while initially being easy to brush off by just saying they're terrible, it isn't the whole story. Even though it was dated by 1995 arcade standards and could hardly be called Bleeding Edge, Master's Fury is still incalculably better looking than its PlayStation remake. The menus, the select screens, the fonts, everything about the UI is absolute clown shoes. Yo, shout outs to these early Photoshop textures. But it's obviously the sprites which took the biggest hit. Even though the PlayStation could handle things like Alpha 3, JoJo, Marvel vs. Capcom, and a bunch of later KOFs and Sam shows, albeit with some animation cuts, for some reason, Master's Fighter looks like this. It's just inexcusable. The comparison I want to make here, just my gut instinct, but I think you'll agree, is that this game renders out sprites like the zoomed out versions you see in early SNK games, but instead of being temporary and having a cool cinematic flair to them, it's just all the fucking goddamn time. Like, why? Why is it like this? Is it a bug? Th this might be the ugliest 2D fighting game I've ever seen, and I've seen Human Killing Machines. It's so egregious it actually affects the gameplay in that it makes it hard to even discern what certain characters are doing at any given time. I just, it's actually stunning in a way. With that in mind, you shouldn't be too surprised by the backgrounds, which have seen big cuts in animation, detail, and a bunch of wholesale on-screen elements just being cut, which I guess is expected. There are like one or two stages that are kind of cute, I guess, like this hotel lobby. I don't know, it's, it's kind of neat. There's a comforting vibe here. And endings are confirmed. I repeat, confirmed. And honestly, they're probably the highlight of this whole fiasco, because they're stuffed to the gills with so much English, they will surely elicit a sensible chuckle at the very least, and a hearty knee slapper at most. So here's but a sampler. Mr. Death de defeated 2660. Ha! He's no match for me. I have no long have use for you. Even they cannot stop me. Tainted with blood, this fist. My cursed. This destiny. Then, till the end of this life of mine. An ogre, a demon. I shall become those who stand before me. I shall kill away. Thereafter, he once again disappears into the darkness of the city. Did you, did you get all that? With that insanity coating our brains, let me follow it up with the roster because, well, I still have so many sights to show you. First, we have Long, or Lee, from World Heroes. Takuya, or Kim slash Ryo, from both Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting. Kang T. Kung, or Tung Fu Ru. Michelle, or Yuri. Gamp, or... I, I don't know who this guy's ripping off. Kane, or Geese Howard. Sakamoto, or Jubei Yagyu. Then there's Bill, or Jack. Azarl, or Mr. Big, slash John, slash Guile. Jay, probably the most unique character of the bunch, although that hair is very Benny Maru. Then the previously mentioned Mr. Death, who is simply just, I, I don't know, like, like three art of fighting characters at once. Then we finally end on T660, who is just Choi from KOF, but somehow even more Freddy-like. As you can see, 
doing their own thing wasn't really Unico's thing. I mean, sure, a lot of their characters in Dragon Master at least looked a little more original, but a ton of their moves and animation frames were not, which is a tradition that continues on in Master's Fighter. Which, of course, brings us to the... Oh, wait, what's happening? I did ask for... Oh, uh, Guile Winquo from the YouTube channel Guile Winquote, are you here to take over the task of explaining the Masters Fighter's mechanics or uh, lack of mechanics? Yep, that's exactly what I'm here for. But I won't lie, Matt, this was a tough one to learn. Because once you've played enough fighting games, you can kind of just look at a fighter and know whether it's going to play well or not. And I don't think you need to be Daigo to realize that the Masters Fighter is a bit rough around the edges. But we gotta cut it some slack, okay? because the fighting game genre was still going through growing pains when it released. Because every company was trying to innovate on the genre- Wait, this isn't one of the first fighting games ever? Uh, nope. This was released in 1997, the same year that Tekken 3 and Vampire Savior came out. That is correct. Okay, that, that changes things. Let's rip into this. The Masters Fighter plays horribly, and straight up ignores almost every single convention that makes the fighting game genre work on a fundamental level. And trust me, I mean fundamental. Even just walking in this game feels sluggish, and when you jump, your character either moves in slow motion or way too fast to react to anything. There are only four buttons, a light and hard punch and kick, but they feel super laggy, have no impact, and also just don't make any sense. There are seemingly no mid attacks in Master's Fighter, so all crouching buttons will hit an opponent who's blocking while standing, even if it's visually goofy. Overheads are nothing new in fighting games. But have you ever seen an underhead? And then there's the special moves. Which, first of all, you can't even find out how to do them online. Do you know how bad a game has to be for there not to be one single soul out there who's bothered to put out a move list? Even Dino Rex has a move list online. Secondly, all of the special moves I could find are just awful because they're super awkward and they do no chip damage because of course this game doesn't have chip damage so they offer no real advantage in neutral. Or at least they wouldn't if Master's Fighter wasn't the most backwards designed fighting game ever. Every single attack in Master's Fighter forces the opponent into a proximity guard state from anywhere on the screen. That means you can mash jab from full screen and if the other player even thinks about walking back, they'll be stuck in place. This lets you go crazy on buttons and specials cause the opponent either has an answer and trust me, they won't because everything feels awful in this game, or they're just forced to stand there and hold it. This also breaks cross-ups, because if your opponent jumps over you with an attack, your character instantly blocks, but then turns around with them. Meaning, you have to block the incoming jump attack in the complete opposite direction that you would in every other single fighting game. But okay, we get it though. The Master's Fighter sucks and doesn't work. But at least there's probably some funny and broken combos in this game, right? The Fighter's Master. The Master's Fighter. Uh, what? Um, you mistakenly said the name in reverse. It, it doesn't matter. Matt, who cares what this Art of Fighting wannabe is called? Because it has no cancel or juggle system at all. That means there are no crouching kicks in the fireballs, or crazy dragon punch combos in the corner, or just fun combos in general. You just press buttons and spam special moves. This makes the Fighter's Master. Master's Fighter. Whatever, I don't care what it's called, because this game is worse than bad in my opinion. Because it's just boring. With how hard they tried to rip off SNK's characters and aesthetic, you think they would have tried copying just a bit of their gameplay design too. Yeah, I know, right? But um, in terms of the game feel, uh, can you bring up the game feel bumper, please? Thank you. So um, how does the Fighter's Master's fury, whatever, how does it control its flow, the weight of the characters, the speed, etc.? It feels disrespectful to the genre and all of the fighting games that came before it. Okay, yeah, that checks out. Um, hey, uh, thanks, Mr. Winquote, for stopping by. I, Because I, I sure didn't want to talk about the gameplay of fucking fighting masters. Look, my whole thing is being positive towards fighting games, so... Please don't ask me to come on here again. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Uh, oh wait, a last minute plug. Where can all the fine fight fans at home find you? Well, for anyone who needs a palate cleanser after seeing one of the worst the fighting game genre has to offer, you can always swing by my channel to learn about some underappreciated fighting game gems. Wait, uh, I thought the Kasoge, the eSports, the Balance, the Broken, I thought all fighting games are good. Uh, anyways, yeah, I'm out of here.
Have fun with your bad games, Matt. Fair enough. Okay, so where does that actually put us? Because there's a... Uh, there, there's a lot to dislike here. Uh, lame characters, headache-inducing graphics, no real gameplay or mechanics, really? Uh, well, what does this have going for it? The, the English endings? I mean, that does count for something. Honestly, while the game does feel abysmal, I don't think it quite supplants Expect No Mercy, which is still in a whole other realm, so I think the crown is being kept for another day. I have seen the amateur and it is you! But that doesn't mean Fighter's Master, damn, the Master's Fighter is getting off easy, because it's still quite potent in its tier as a Grand Master of Trash. Thanks again to Guile Winquote for entering our ring, and do check out his channel for a ton of great inside baseball content on this wonderfully wacky genre known as the Button Basher. With that said, Warriors, train hard until I return next time on the worst fighting game.